Hi everyone, and yes here, I've got a really lovely self-love success story here and it's from Lynn. It's called 368 Days Later. And it goes like this. Good morning. If you have received this email, you are one of the people who have been along with me in the journey of my life this past year or longer. It was 368 days ago that my son, unbeknownst to him, shared with me that his dad had a girlfriend. Now, let me say that this verbage my son used was not girlfriend. However, he told me of this, then summer activities, I put two and two together. Now, that's another story. As you know, my spouse and I have a history of ups and downs. All marriages do, but for some reason, this just gutted me. Even he said it was a betrayal. Go figure. A day and a half to two days later, I had to go to my new job and smile and act normal when in all, and in all actuality, my life was not normal or happy. I told my director what was going on with my life at that time because I wanted her to know that if she all of a sudden saw me crying or needing a moment, she would know why. About a week or two later, I told my therapist I wanted us to meet once a week rather than the agreed upon once every two weeks. I have had some to ask me what did I think was going to happen given the situation. I have had some tell me hold my head up that I will be okay and in some instances I have had some to not care because they were dealing with their own issues as well. All of this was okay. I needed all of it. If I told you I never cried during these 368 days I would be a big liar. Suicide was never an option but I was trying to figure out how could I not have feelings so that I could not feel my hurt, pain, agony, and every other feeling. I had to go through that journey. I had to go through that journey. Oh Lord. During that time, many women I love and trust were my sounding board. Love and support. If you received this email, then you were one of them. Your strength, prayers, words of upliftment, and or actions of kindness got me through. I talked to women who went through the same thing, I went through and today they are truly more amazing. My cousin was often my brain on those days that all I could do was cry and just try to make sense, not just out of the last year, but of my life. When I spoke with her, I am pretty sure that my brain left me. I received the counsel of very wise women and for that I am so grateful and thankful. In the words of my cousin, I'm still standing. I can tell you that of no fault of my spouse, I really put him on a pedestal for much of my marriage. I can also tell you that I didn't think too highly of myself, but God thought a lot of me. All I knew was how to be a mum, a wife, and put myself, my wants and needs on the back burner. I betrayed me. So you can see the first betrayal did not come from him, it came from me. It came from me for the times that I second guessed myself. It came from me for the times when I put off doing something for me that I really needed to do, but said I would get to it later and never did. It came from me when I found fault with my body rather than thanking it for holding me up, housing my three boys and just going beyond and doing for me when it needed to rest. The betrayal came from me in so many ways. You see, my spouse wasn't the first betrayal I was. Why do we get mad when people do us wrong, yet we do us wrong all the time or first? Why is it that when we show people how to treat us by how we treat ourselves and they treat us how we treat ourselves, we get mad? We teach boys no means no when it comes to dealing with girls. However, mums need to be taught that for themselves, their no means no and their yes means yes. And don't bend on that. 368 days later, I am so happy. I have done and accomplished so much. 
I see me. I am where I want to be. No, but I am not where I was. This is the third day of school for teachers. The students came, the students come next Monday. I can tell you that I can look at myself in the mirror with a huge smile on my face and say, still standing. The tears now are more happy tears than sad tears. I am slowly taking my spouse off the pedestal of my life and putting me on it. As I stand on this pedestal, I like the view up here. My options and opportunities are endless. As I pour into my own cup, and my coffee is good, others get to enjoy from my overflow. I am not alone because God never left me. God was just waiting for me to come back to us. My next step in this journey is forgiveness, radical forgiveness. There are so many more things I want to accomplish in my life. And if I want to accomplish them, I have to first forgive myself and then forgive others. Sometimes I am not ready because like many, wearing the victim coat is easy. It is easy to see how others have wronged me. Other days I truly forgive myself, but still hold others at fault for whatever. It's all a part of the healing process, as my counselor would say. Why am I sending you this? Because I wanted to share some of my testimony this far with you. I want you to pour your own cup and taste the sweetness of your own coffee rather than be mad at others who aren't pouring into your cup or being mad at the fact that they don't see or think of your coffee as delicious. I want you to not be a victim in life, but rather to be a co-creator of it on your own terms. Thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Lynn, this is a huge thing. It is one of these emails that I read not as frequently as I would like, but this one from you, and I asked you if I could share that because you sent it to me privately and you agreed, is one of those amazing moments in, doesn't matter that it's a woman, a person, an individual self-love journey. So thank you so much for sending it in. And I do hope we get to hear a second installment from you, maybe in another 368 days, two years on. And I look forward to hearing the rest of your journey and the rest of your unfolding in your manifesting. So for those of you that enjoyed this story of Lynn's, I am putting the self love success stories playlist down below. I think it is one of the most valuable playlists on my channel. I'm also going to put some self love meditation playlists and other self love tips down below for you. If you can work on this part, if you can make this the most important part of your journey in manifesting, the outside with relationships will change and reflect, reflect back to you the new you. So lots of love everyone and I look forward to reading your comments about Lynn's beautiful story and as always, I will see you in the next YouTube.